everybody, it's Vera Sweeney from Lady in the Blog, and I am so excited to be standing next to Luca Manfi. He is the winner of MasterChef Season 4, and I'm a mom with three very, very picky eaters, so I, I have a lot of questions for you today. We're going to be talking about that today. a little bit later on. I know that we are going to be walking through some of your recipes using the Phillips Air Fryer, but before we get started with that, I wanted to ask you, what yes. was it like being on MasterChef? It, it was a great experience. First of all, ciao, Vera, and ciao, everybody, all the girls that are looking at home. Thank you for watching us today. MasterChef was a great experience. And honestly, to get to spend so much time with Gordon Ramsay, with Chef Graham Elliott, and with Minister Joe Bastianich, it was really a lifetime opportunity, you know? Everybody says that, you know? But it's true, because, you know, when you're gonna have three big names yes. of the restaurant business, especially for me that I grew up, you know, in the restaurant business as a waiter before, then I become a manager when I moved here in New York, and now, you know, I found myself in this, uh, new profession, new job for me. So it, it was awesome. Is your Philips air fryer ready? Because we preheated this one before we started. So it takes just three minutes. So if you haven't preheated yet, just do the recipe with us, right? Yes. Three minutes at 360 degrees. So I watched at home, I watched along with you, and I was so nervous, I had anxiety. I, I, my heart would start racing. How did you handle all that stress? At the beginning, you don't really handle. You just right. go with the flow. Because, you know, it's a completely new world. You have cameras everywhere. Then while you're cooking, you have the judges that come and talk to you. And at the beginning, especially, you want to make sure that you give them a good impression. So you always pay attention to what you're going to say. You don't want to say nothing silly, right? Yes. You want to make yourself look smart. But then day after day that you spend on set, you get more comfortable with the kitchen, you get more comfortable with the time, you know, because at the beginning, the first uh, challenges that you have 60 minutes, it looks like a very small amount of time. True. But then true. you get used, and, and you know, those 60 minutes, you can do a, really a lot of things. And you, you've been busy. There's a cookbook. W w tell me about your cookbook. So cookbook was part of the beautiful MasterChef deal. Yes. Is that over here? Oh, here it it's is. It's been published, published by Abram's book, and it hit the shelves on May. So it's already, what, three months? Wow. And it's doing great. I'm very excited. The cookbook is more or less an introduction of who I am to America uh -huh. through my recipes. I say America because MasterChef was in a was in the States, but I gotta say, I have a lot of people that buy the cookbook through the websites, I mean, through through internet, and I got people that tweet me in Facebook messages, and they got the book like in Asia, in Canada, in Italy, everywhere in Europe, it's very exciting. So it's uh, my favorite family recipe. So it's food that my mother and my grandmother used to cook for me, stuff that I like to recreate at home, St things that remind me when I was a kid. Those are the best recipes, right? I agree. W you hear the smell in your kitchen, and it takes you back to when I was a kid and it was my mother's food. Yes. And also, you're going to find some recipes that I create in the past years. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, you know, some winning dishes from MasterChef, like the beef short ribs mm. that I made in the finale, and also the fantastic uh, basil panna cotta with tomato jam that it was a big success. The judges I, loved it in the finale. I had lunch, but you're making me hungry again. So let's I stop. I always Let, talk about please, food. Please, let's, let's go to the cruise, because I know you're dump, doing something with the cruise, Another too. exciting thing. So uh, November 8th is the first MasterChef cruise. So it's going to be me, Chef Gremeliot, Christine Ha, Becky Rams, oh. Brie Cozier from my season, and also the winner of MasterChef season five that mm -hmm. I, you know, is airing right now. So I can't wait to really find out who she she will be, but it's fun. It's gonna be live pressure test. Okay. Mystery boxes. And it's going to be exciting, you know. I've never been in a cruise before. Oh. So for me, So my birthday is awesome. November 10th. Am I invited? You're is invited. Oh. We, do a, we throw a big uh, birthday party. We heard it. We heard it live. Okay, one more thing. Dinner yes. with Luca. I see this on your... Dinner with Luca. This is my company. You know, like, MasterChef really changed a lot about my life because uh, I was able to open this small company, which mm -hmm. I usually, you know, I cook by myself. When I get 
more people to cook for. Then I have somebody, some friends that help me uh, along the way. But it's a very unique, particular service because I go to people's home and I cook in their kitchen. So we work on the menu together. The menu is customized every time different for, you know, their request because people ask me for many different things and I try to do, you know, everything to help them. And then most of the time I get home to their house mm -hmm. early before and they like to cook with me. Ah. I bring my aprons, we cook together so they can see my tricks, you know, my recipes. And also something that I started two months ago almost is dinner with Luca here in Brooklyn. So who, for people who come in vacation from overseas or from all over the states, they can come in Brooklyn. We have a small uh, private location. We do uh, up to eight people. Okay. And I got people from Malaysia, Singapore, Spain, Brazil. Uh -huh. It's exciting. And also people from, from the states, Wisconsin, Seattle, you know, because people come here on vacation mm -hmm. and they don't really have uh, a space, you know, they get to a hotel. They don't have a kitchen. But this one is a uh, very, very, I love it because it gets me, you know, time to, to talk with, with everybody. So do you have people from Garden City, Long Island? Because that's <laughs> where I live. I think it, as a service to everyone watching, I think you need to do I this actually, with me. I actually did an event in, no, in Garden no, you City. Didn't. No, you I go didn't. a lot no, in Long didn't. Island. Hmm. A lot. Okay. A lot. All right, I'm trying, I'm an only child, so everything has to turn around back to me. <laughs> okay, so I know that we're going to start with the breakfast, the breakfast for time. Yes. And I'm really excited to hear this because, like I said, I have three kids. They're all very, very picky eaters. Back to school is right around the corner. And when it, it comes to breakfast, I put things in the toaster. That's what I do in the morning. So this is very foreign to me. This would never happen in the morning. Please show me. You're telling me I can do this in 10 minutes? You can do this in 10 minutes. That's exactly <sighs> right. Looking at the clock, you do this in 10 minutes. So frittata, okay, is one of the fun things to start the meal, you know? Uh, you can do anything, you know, people like sweet, but frittata is really something, especially for the kids, gives a lot of energy, a lot of nutrition, but it's healthy, right. okay? So in this case, I use Italian sausage, the traditional one with fennel, and heirloom cherry tomatoes. And you see how, you know, they are colorful. I love them. You go to the farmer's market right now, and you have all these small, different little tomatoes. They, they are amazing. But, yes, sausage and tomatoes, but... Frittata is something very versatile that you can really do with anything. Anything. Asparagus in springtime, mushroom. I like mushroom and goat cheese maybe in fall. Okay. Okay, butternut squash. You really can. Now that it's summertime, beautiful zucchini. So I was just going to ask you, so if I don't like uh, sausage, which yes. I love sausage, but maybe if I want to substitute it with bacon, you're saying yes. I can just switch bacon, it up. Bacon, prosciutto, pancetta. And I just wanted to say, um, parents at home, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Luca, there will be time at the end of the demonstration that you will be able to uh, type them in, and we will have a nice Q&A with him at the end of the demo. So please jot them in. Me yeah. too. I'm going to be harassing him. Don't be him. shy. Right. Don't be shy. I, I will be asking him a lot of questions throughout, but I know that you might have questions too. So please jot them down as we go, and we'll make time at the end so we can have um, some interactions with you guys as well but we encourage you to cook along with yes. us with your Phillips air fryer as well so start with this you take half a Italian sausage okay and you dice it up and the pan is gonna be hot because we just preheated so make sure you don't burn yourself but the cool part I don't know if you notice this is a, a, a non-stick non baking tray okay so no and oil no oil okay this is of course the sausage will have a little bit of fat because it's pork sausage okay. okay but any other ingredients you use because this is pen is non-stick you don't really need to put all oil at all i love the flavor of extra virgin olive oil and one tablespoon is not bad for you right but you know when if you would do this at home on the stove let's start it up so we can Either. So put the timer up, five minutes, and then press start. And this is the cool thing about this, because the Philips Air Fryer, with the rapid air technology, and I'll explain you later how it works, but this rapid air technology circulates all over, and it cooks the food that you have inside evenly. So I'm so used to being at the stove 
t t turning with my spoon and making sure that I'm not burning. I don't have to touch this. You don't. This is the thing that I love the most because how important it is to have time in your hands when, you know, you still have to make food, you know? Right. Your kids, your husband, or husband's at home, you know, your wife, you want to make food. But this is awesome for me. I just became a dad seven <laughs> weeks ago. Congratulations. And uh, thank you very much. It's, it's very, very exciting. But you know better than me. You have three kids, but everybody's at home knows it is a lot of work, you know? Yes. And me as a dad right now with the kid, there's not much I can do besides changing diapers, you know? Right. But I like to help my wife as much as I can. And, you know, food is important because I take a big weight out of her if I get almost always breakfast, lunch, and dinner mm. ready for her. But at the same time, when I make frittata in the morning, I can put it inside. And now I have five minutes. I can run downstairs and do the laundry. But you know better than me. There is so many things in, you can do in five minutes. I mean, minutes. back to school time in five minutes, I feel like I can make my kids lunch. I can make sure that they're getting dressed. I mean, I, I don't have to be stuck to my stove, you're saying. I can then go throughout the day and get them all prepared for school on the bus exactly. while this is happening. That is so great. Now, how, okay, so. Now we get the egg eggs mixer. Need, right. Okay. So we said half a sausage. Half a sausage. Okay. okay. A few cherry tomatoes. Right. Three eggs. That I'm gonna break here pretty fast and easy. I mean, it's breaking eggs, so I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. Right. <laughs> Just make sure, but you know better than me, to don't get any shell in it. And then you will use two tablespoons of Grana Padano cheese from Italy, which is one of my favorite cheese ever. Just now, dumped it in. Let me ask you about that. If yes. I don't have this cheese, can I substitute mozzarella or cheddar you you can you can substitute with any cheese you like okay your mozzarella will be a little bit more uh, gooey but it works perfect just make it chop, I have to dice it right chop it, okay. dice it, yeah cheddar cheese and regular Fontina parmesan cheese regular parmesan yes but i like grana padano if i, I have to choose a parmesan i have to I write like, that down yes grana padano grana and padano. then okay. parsley which is one of my favorite herbs one tablespoon of parsley one chopped tablespoon. Finally, pinch of salt, boom, boom. <laughs> now, when I put the salt, do Pepper? I have to say boom, boom? You can. I can yeah, do that. Yeah, you need okay. to spice get it little, up a little, get a little bit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I Otherwise, like this. I usually, like this. when I cook at home, I have my music going. I'm very miserable I when jump. I cook at home. <laughs> I, I don't have this excitement <laughs> and energy when I'm doing this. <laughs> But no, cooking is exciting. I know, no, it's, yeah? it's, it's because someone's like dra like on my leg complaining oh, okay, about yeah. somebody else usually <laughs> when I'm cooking. If I had nobody around me, I think I it can, would be more I can see that. I can understand that perfectly. So now you put the fresh parsley in the egg. Yes. Are you going to, do you garnish it as well? Well, yeah, I have a little bit left. So, right. you know, when the, when the frittata is done, you put a little bit on top. You know, you always try, I know you're busy, right? But it takes one second to make a little bit the plate yeah, a little it. bit easier. Yeah, there's yeah. many ways. Okay. But frittata, yeah, it's uh, it's fun. It's easy. Okay, I'm excited. I can't right. wait to see this. This is this is nothing like what my breakfast looks like. I will say that. So we have a couple of minutes left. Okay. On this one. So I'm excited to see. So now with your cookbook, I know you said that um, you, the meatballs are something that are, were inspired from your cookbook. Yes. Yes. And I know that we're going to walk through them. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the meatballs. The meatballs are uh, very unique because my mother used, of course, ground beef, right? But then at home, I actually make it with lamb all the time. So it depends. You can do whatever you like. With what? I'm sorry? Lamb. Lamb? Lamb meatballs. They are delicious. But I'll tell you this one later because that's my wife loves lamb. So one day we started doing it, and now the air fryer goes a couple of days a week making lamb meatballs. We made it smaller, because it's uh, they cook faster. But this is my mother's recipe. So, like everybody, she uses breadcrumbs. She uses grana padano cheese, like garlic and onion. A little bit of white wine. A little bit of white wine. Yes, but check this out. Before, oh, wait, before she you start, say it, wait a second. Don't tell the secret ingredient, because we are, OK, it shut down, right. so I think okay, we get. OK, perfect. Is your air fryer done at home? Let's see. So five minutes are gone. And you can see. Let me see. Right? It's sizzling. You see? Sizzling and browned. I love this. The tomatoes are cooked. 
This is mixed. Look at this. Just make sure that it's all chopped up. Okay, so you separate them yeah, one I mean, more if, time. Yeah. Yep. I should have done I it see. before, honestly, but it's easy to make it now. Look. And you see, you know, didn't put any oil on anything, but nothing sticked on no. it. No. Okay. Make sure your eggs are all incorporated. Put the mixture in your pan. Okay. Now, just make sure that you have evenly, you know, the sausage and they're not all in the same corner of the pan. Okay. Put it back in. Don't touch the, the baking tray inside because it's very hot. But the bottom isn't hot. The bottom isn't hot. No. Th this that you put on this is not hot? No. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay. Five more minutes. Oh, it is a five already. Press start again. When this is beeping, it means that it's working. How did you become a chef before we dive back into the meatballs? Well, I, I just want to hear say, this story. I gotta say honestly, I love to cook. Yes. But I'm not a chef. You're not a chef. It's like I worked in the restaurant business for for so many years in the front of the house, and I work with a lot of great chefs. So I'm somebody who was lucky that had a passion about cooking mm -hmm. and went in a reality show. Okay. And I was lucky enough that I won it. So this, it helped me, you know, to make this passion of mine mm -hmm. something that I can do every day. Right. But I'm no different than somebody who cooks at home, like a mother or like a dad that takes care of the family, you know, and cooks for the family every single day. I'm just, you know, somebody who really loves food. Mm -hmm. And right now, because I'm doing it every day, I realize that, you know, I get a lot of tools where I can learn, you know, and improve my techniques, improve, you know, my, my knowledge of ingredients. And, you know, I watch a, a lot of YouTube videos, uh -huh. uh, cooking programs, still I watch them, and also cookbooks. Cookbooks is my, is my favorite thing. But you, you know? have such a passion. How early did that start for you? I, I think it, it started early because I love to eat a lot of food. Uh -huh. And I was lucky enough that my grandmother and my mother were amazing cooks. So, you know, it's part of all the, all the culture in Italy, okay? Yeah. Because we, we do it, we have, we have a great variety of different food. So it started very young, but then, you know, I found myself, I was 21 the first time that I came in the States. So 21 years old, you live by yourself. Right. I was lucky that I was working in a restaurant. So, you know, you have this family meal. So most of the time I was eating at the restaurant. But then year after year, I found myself wanting to improve what I was cooking. Mm -hmm. And because I got the opportunity here in New York, especially, you have such an amazing restaurant. And I got to work, you know, in these nine years in many different restaurants, not only in Italian cuisine, but I worked in French cuisine, mm. Japanese cuisine. Me and my wife met when we were working in a Japanese restaurant. Wow. Who they thought with a guy with a French, with an Italian accent right. like this. Okay, I said French, I was joking. And uh, then uh, uh, even a modern American, modern American restaurant was fantastic, you know, reinventing American classic. Right. So that what led me, you know, to try and cook different food. And, you know, day after day, year after year, I, I realized that, you know, my, my food looked very nice. And, and then I was watching MasterChef on TV and I said, and like, you said I could do it. Maybe, maybe I should go and take a look. I love it. So now the meatballs, we were going to the secret ingredient. Yes. Let me hear what your secret ingredient is. I think nobody would guess it. So you take a whole ciabatta bread. Okay. You cut it in cubes. Cubes. And then you soak it completely in milk. In milk? In milk. Yes. And you let it soak for a half an hour. So the bread will absorb as much milk as possible. You're going to see that the milk is gonna disappear because the bread will, will soak it. But then you still squeeze it because okay. it's still gonna be moist. And then you mix it with everything that you have, like the, what we said before, onion, garlic, white wine, uh, parsley, meat. But no breadcrumbs. You put a little bit of breadcrumbs. Oh, a little bit a of breadcrumbs too. Just okay. a little bit, okay. but not too much. The recipe calls, I think, for one tablespoon one with tablespoon one pound. In one Which pound. is so, so little, no, right? Exactly. So little. Okay. And and then you see, you can see, like you form it. They're different. You and know? then is there, is there anything else that's secret in here? A zest of something? I think I heard lemon it. zest. Lemon zest. I have never heard of that in a meatball that's before. That's something that a lot of people tell me, like lemon zest with meat. 
But, you know, if you think about it, you know, lemon zest, also in Mediterranean cuisine, uh, is used a lot. What I found is the lemon zest bring, brings a completely different level. I can't wait to try this. Of, of flavor. Yes. They are, they are really delicious. And now how many meatballs can you fit into the Philips air fryer? So you see this one are big, right? My mother right. meat was always being big. Uh, the Philips air fryer comes with a double layer rack. Okay. And I can fit eight at the same time. Okay. And these are big, eh? Two of them is a good meal, maybe with a salad on the side. Right. Okay, but if you eat a lot like me, you can have four and leave the other four <laughs> to right. my wife. Right. And this, you stick them in, takes what? Eight to ten minutes. Eight to ten minutes. Depends how you like it. My wife likes it. Oh, the frittata is okay, ready. Okay, let's see. See how simple it was? I mean, we didn't amazing. have to do anything. Now, make sure you don't burn yourself. I'm yeah. going to take it out. And I'm going to show you that looks amazing. how fluffy and delicious it is. Look at this. Okay, I'm going to handle it. I'm very scared to burn myself. Oop. And voila! It's that very looks hot. So good. It's very hot. So you can do it with a with a tongue. Maybe if you have you know one of those very heavy duty. Uh, kitchen racks, wow. you can use that one as well. So, this is this is the thing. This is a dish that when you make it on the stove, it requires attention. Yes. It requires at least one tablespoon of butter, yes. because when you make the eggs, you want to make sure they don't stick in the bottom. And then, you need to make sure to flip it at the right time, right. because you don't want to burn it. And then, you need to make this nice Fluffy crust. I you mean, I, it's so. I call this baby. I don't have. I don't do things that I have to babysit. Yes. This is like a babysitting. I dish. agree with you. And this just made. Now it's possible for me to make this again because I have the capability of being look, with look my the children. Colors. Look. Really, it's it's browned on top. You have all the different colors and flavors. You can actually see what this would taste like. Are, are we gonna try this? Because I think we should. I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind. I no, want to no. try this. No, no. Why would I mind? I love right, it. I want I'm just gonna take an edge. You know what I like is. And I have the little sausage in right. here. Oh, you found the lost sausage? I, didn't. I didn't get the sausage. Look, fluffy, moist. This is so good. Mm. And it's easy. My husband would eat this and he wouldn't share this with me. He wouldn't? He's very the selfish. Ones? He's very selfish. Three eggs he would, a lot. Three eggs, right. he would run into another room and he would eat this whole thing. He this would is hide so it. good. Now, wait, let's just get back to the meatballs because yes. I know that you have a video to share. Oh, I do have a video, yes. I forgot. So, now, a few minutes, ladies and uh, boys at home. I don't know, but I, I can see you. You can see me, but I can't see them. <laughs> so, look at this very easy video that I can show you how to make these meatballs in a very easy way, okay? Take a look, and we'll see you when we come back. With the Philips air fryer, I can show you how fast and easy it is to prepare restaurant-quality dishes at home for any special occasion. Now it's time to cook the meatballs. Philips air fryer evenly cooks the meat and with less than a tablespoon of oil, it's healthier than sauteing. And easy as that, my meatballs are ready. Look how perfectly cooked the meatball is all over. So now we're up to my children's favorite part of the, of, the, of the segment. And actually, mine too, I'm not even going to lie here. The French fries. I made these this week with my children. And they started to, they levitated. They floated when I showed them the results because I, I didn't believe it when I first read it. One tablespoon of olive oil for two whole potatoes. I just didn't think it was possible to get that crunch and to get the firmness. These were the most delicious french fries that I've ever tasted. And I used the Philips air fryer. You know, I know you know. I, you but know, I'm walking uh, around telling everybody about these french fries because I can't get over how healthy they are. I think it's funny that uh, the first thing that you tried to do was, was french fries. Because of course. that's the first thing that I did myself. Because, you know, yes, it's called air fryer. But when they present it to you, it's like, it's very hard to believe yes. that you can make french fries with no oil. Because we all know French fries are delicious, but they're not healthy because right. we need to cook them deep in fat. But really, the air fryer with the 
rapid air technology, that is the secret. You have this fan who circulates the air super fast. And as I said, 360, 390 is the max that mm -hmm, can go. Mm -hmm. And 390 for 10 minutes, you're going to have these French fries. But these are not potatoes that we bought frozen. These are potatoes that we made 20 minutes ago. We peel them, shave them in, in, in fries shape, of course, mm -hmm. and then stick them in the, in the Philips air fryer. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, of course salt, if you like it. Yes. And then you stick it in. And again, 10 minutes that you can use to do anything else around the house. And can I tell you something? After we made these, my we, I've never made french fries in my house. My oldest is nine years old. I've never made french fries. My daughter called it a french fry miracle. <laughs> so let's just say that. Now they are, it is a part of our, we, I will actually make french fries in our house. And then my husband, after I made them, he made a second batch. When I when I went into the other to room, he started a second easy. batch. He couldn't believe how good they were. So. This alone is reason to, to own the Phillips Air Fryer, fryer for me. I, I've I been telling, I'm stopping people on the street. I'm like, hi, do you have the time? Oh, and by <laughs> the way, let me tell you about the Phillips Air <laughs> Fryer funny. French fries. So honestly, the be this was the I best think, thing that they, I've I had so I think one of the reasons why you don't make French fries at home, and this is the reason why I never make fry food at home, because you make it on the stove, even if you have a little fryer, it doesn't matter, because it's going to stink the house for days. That fry food smell, you, as soon as you open the door, you, you keep it there like for a week. Yes. With the Philips air fryer is another problem that you solve because there's no oil and there's no frying, okay? Right. So beautiful, perfect, small, it's compact. You don't make a mess in the stove. Yes. You're not going to heat the whole kitchen. Yes. Which and is so it's great. not going to smell. Yes. And as a mom, it's a healthier option for your children. They want french fries. Every child wants french fries. As a mom, you don't want to give it to them. This is a healthier alternative to that. This is a solution. It's almost a solution to that problem. Me and my wife are, are using it almost every day. I because believe Because it really it. takes a lot of... And I made salmon. I made skirt steak. I made chicken. I made hamburgers. You really can make even venison. I saw you made a panini. Oh. I saw that video. Yes. If you go on the website, philips.com slash air fryer, there is a beautiful cooking demo, like the one for the meatballs, about this grilled Italian sandwich. Yes. So we took this uh, classic, uh, that is an Italian, uh, um, you know, American classic, the, the grilled cheese sandwich, mm -hmm. and we make it an Italian way with basil, mozzarella, pesto, and grana padano. And... You put it, you know, you flip it, you d put a little bit of aioli, because mm -hmm. now it's very fashion, say aioli, which is mayo, right? You put it there. Anything you say is fancy. <laughs> He's like, you put it there. I'm like, yeah. that's so fancy. And then when it comes out, it's nice and evenly crusted yes. all over, like you flipped it on the stove. Yes. So the best thing for me is that I don't have to clean the stove. It doesn't make a mess in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't smell too much. And once you're done, you're done cooking, yes. you're done eating, and you're tired. You take everything and you stick it in the dishwasher because everything is dishwasher safe. Right, that's another perk. So actually now we are going to gear up for the Q&A session. If you My have, favorite I'm part. glad, I'm glad. If you have any questions that um, came up throughout the entire demonstration, now is the time to type them in and um, we will get them over to Luca. I mean, there's not many times that you get to have a one-on-one -on -one with a master chef. Okay, so someone at home is hoping to make zucchini fries with them. Can you give me a brief description of how that would work exactly? In the same way that you would make uh, the French fries, you okay. know? Okay. I would probably, because it's zucchini, and, and uh, they get a little bit wet after mm -hmm. you cut them, just dread it a little bit. Uh, with some, uh, I like cornstarch or flour. Okay. And then a little bit of olive oil before. And then you dread so it with the flour. So toss them after the yeah. flour first, then toss them No, with olive oil, then you, so the, the, oli the flour sticks. Okay. And then put it in the, in the basket. And but not too much flour. You don't want to do a heavy breading. Okay. Just to give it extra cr crispiness. Now, panko breadcrumbs or regular breadcrumbs? Because I heard with zucchini, like panko might be a, a better option. Panko is the best breadcrumb that you want. Okay. But if you want to make it even healthier, you don't really need the breadcrumbs. You can just, just do it Just a little bit of flour. Olive just oil and flour. And they will become crispy. Because it's, it's super, super hot. And because it's so compact. Right. Um, okay, so where can viewers buy your cookbook? 
or pick up your cookbook. Um, yes, where can viewers buy your cookbook? Here it is. So, my Italian kitchen, favorite family recipe. This is anywhere in every bookstore wow. around America. And of course online. You go to abrams.com, which is my fantastic publisher. And also from my cookbook, uh, from my website, I'm sorry, lucamanfed.com, you can find all the links where you can, uh, some links, some website, they have the signed copy, some other recipe, you know, some other website, they have just the normal. But if you go on my website, and also abrams.com, mm -hmm. also the MasterChef website. Oh. So there's plenty, plenty of, we say now, just Google it. Just right? Google it. <laughs> uh, just really quickly, what's your favorite recipe in there before I move on to the next question? Uh, probably the risotto. Risotto. The lemon. Another babysitting right. recipe, though. Exactly. That's, but I, I will try it because honestly, it's my, my wife's I love favorite. Risotto. It's I, the first dish that I made for my wife. I always order risotto because it's something that I just I just don't make at home often enough. Okay, so what about cooking fish in the air fryer? Any suggestions on that? Yes. Uh, it's easy as a Sunday morning. Olive oil. Just a little bit, but not because you need the olive oil, just because the olive oil is, uh, you know, one of the king ingredients of the Italian cuisine. A tablespoon or less, depends how much fish. If you do one filet, you just need that small teaspoon. You drizzle on top. I cook salmon, I cook cod fish. Cut. There's no fish that you cannot cook, you know. The Philips air fryer comes with a book with all the recipes and timing, but of course you need to adapt at the size of the fish. What I do right now, because I'm using it a lot, right now I know, okay, I see a filet, and I see the weight, right. you know, and I understand, okay, this is gonna take me six minutes to right, have it perfectly cooked, right? Steak's the same. So I have a picky eater in my family, don't we all? My child never eats what the rest of the family is having for dinner and always prefers things that aren't healthy. This is like my question to you, any suggestions? I understand this woman. Yes, I mean, I know sometimes, you know, uh, picky kids can be a problem because you need to make a completely different meal uh, with them. You know, my kid is seven months old, seven weeks old, mm -hmm. so I don't really have a direct suggestion. But what I think I'm going to do is introduce him to food as soon as he's little, but not introducing him, just eating it. I'm going to make him stay in the kitchen with me and help me doing it. Okay. Hoping to try to motivate his, you know, curiosity and look at things and cook in it and then try to taste it. You know, there are some tastes that kids just don't like, you know, but, right. you know, it's very important that you get the vegetables. And I love to make fresh pasta. In the cookbook, there is a whole chapter about fresh pasta. And it takes time, I agree with you, but you can make pasta once a month mm -hmm. and then you freeze it. Oh. And, for example, guess what? You make ravioli, you can make a beautiful filling with spinach and ravioli. And they're almost hidden, right? But the kid is going to have fun playing with the dough, playing with the flour. And that is going to be a good thing. I think it's going to motivate it to try to eat what they help mom or dad that cooking. Is, that is such a great idea. Uh, what about desserts in the air fryer? Can you do Would that? Would you believe it? You can? You can make cupcakes. No. Because, yes, the basket comes, uh, you could just with the basket without the tray, you use like simple ramekins that everybody who's baking has at home, and you put your cupcakes inside for the normal size. But also with the same tray that we used to make the frittata, this you can make a cake. I love that. Because sometimes you don't want 24. Like sometimes exactly, I just right? want. Exactly, right? Because all the recipe that you find in cookbooks on the internet, they all call for a giant. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, guess what? You can make it smaller, and you have, you know, this one, you can make it once, thick, and then you cut it. But it's just the saving of the time. When I have to make for my parties, and I have to make a cake in my kitchen, and it's August now, you put right. the oven at, what, 375? Even if I have the air conditioning working, it's going to be hot. Right. You know? This is so small and so compact, and it's not going to heat up the whole house. And I, I love it for, for many reasons. But this is my, that was my excuse for not cooking during June, mm -hmm. July, and August. So I don't, you know, you're kind of ruining it for me. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say anymore to my husband. Um, how, will, how would you make mac and cheese in the air fryer? That's well, a really good question. It is a good question. It's a delicious also question. Uh, I love mac and cheese. You will have to make the pasta separate. 
Okay. You will have to make the macaroni separate. Just make sure that you keep it al dente. Okay. Okay, nice and you don't want it to overcook it. Um, and then you take the baking tray, like the same one that we use for the frittata, and you make your cheese mixture. Uh, you can use cheddar, you can use grana padano that I like, you can use Swiss cheese, huh? touch of cream. You mix it in a bowl. This is amazing. A cold. Yes. And then you put it on top to cover the pasta. Okay. Okay. I would do the lower temperature, which is 330. And then depends how much pasta you're putting, right? But you want to make sure that you get a nice crust on top. Right. Because I like my mac and cheese to have the crust on top and that goes inside the gooey, you know, creamy part. Yes. So try like that, depending on, I never made it, but I would say that in five minutes, Is that you're gonna have everything lasagna? melted. Same for lasagna. Same for lasagna. I never I'm, thought about this. Yeah, because it's the same. You can make the lasagna there too. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm half joking, but I love to cook. I'm just <laughs> kidding with you. I mean, I, I'm soaking in everything that you say. Okay, what about brownies and cake in the air fryer? How long do they take? They take around eight, ten minutes. Depend, um, depend of course, how, how thick you make them. Okay. Okay. It's always this is the trick, you know. But with the Philips air fryer, you have the basic recipes to make the cake. Right. And so you're gonna see of the quantity. One thing that I get used to it, even when I just make chicken, for example, depending on how, how big the chicken breast is, uh, I know how much time it takes. So it's, okay, trial and error a little bit. If it well, at the beginning, yes. Or you follow the recipes that you have in the book, but happen. then if you wanna spice things up, you know. And that recipe book does come with a lot of uh, yes. options. I mean, oh, yes. I, I leafed through it. There was, there was a nice selection to go through, so I, I did appreciate yes. that. What are some tips for eating healthy in a pinch? In a pinch is uh, make sure that you buy seasonal ingredients. And of course, don't use too much butter or too much oil. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the basic. Uh, we are lucky in Italy because we use extra virgin olive oil. But, you know, I love butter myself. But I understand, you know, sometimes. And also, at night maybe, leave the pasta out. Eat the pasta for lunch. Oh, and okay. keep just proteins and vegetables at night, you know. I'm always trying to lose weight because I'm really eating, because I cook every day. But, you know, I see if you follow simple rules, breakfast is important. Yes. And it can be... A frittata with the Philips air fryer. It can even be yogurt with cereals. But you need to have a full uh, nutritional breakfast right. because it's going to give you a big boost through the day. And then lunch, maybe a little pasta. Make sure you always have vegetables. My mother used to make us eat vegetables, the salad, before the meal. Yes. Because as a kid, we were going like to eat the salad first and then eat less of the rest. Because if you keep the salad for last, then maybe you are too full to eat it. Right, right. Oh, okay, we're going to wrap this up. Anyone that's asked a question we didn't get to answer, no worries. We will email you with Luca's responses right away. Thank you so much for participating today. I know I had a great time learning This was from you. so much fun. Thank you so much. And uh, I just, I'm going to give you a handshake Shouts. and then I'm going to give no, you a big give hug. A I'm going to give you a hug. hug. Uh, thank a you hug again. to everybody at home. Virtual hugs. And for more information, that you can find him everywhere. He said it. Just Google him. LucaManfed.com. You can like me on Facebook. That's another option. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> me too. Share pictures on Instagram. <laughs> Until next time.